Welcome, this is the 700 Club Canada and I'm Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson and man, what a week we've been having. Leading us through an in-depth exploration of the history of Christianity in Canada has been Dr. Brian Stiller, one of Canada's most respected Christian leaders of the last 40 years. Today he closes out his week with us with a look at where Christianity is headed in Canada and worldwide and what we as Canadians can learn from our international brothers and sisters. I'll also have our last segment featuring regular Canadians talking about what they love most and hate most about this great and sometimes conflicted country we call home. But first, here's Brian with our last look at Canadian Christendom. Thank you, Laura Lynn. I know you've enjoyed this as much as I have, uh, just being here with Dr. Stiller, and this is our last day as well. My goodness. Wow, it seems like it's just gone by so quickly. You know, I, I want to say uh, just a little bit about this book as well, because we spoke about being the president of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, but yeah. this as the global ambassador of the Evangelical World Alliance, you have a different, uh, a different view and a different vantage point. You're seeing the globe in a whole different way than most of us will ever get an opportunity to do that. But these are uh, leadership principles, seven ancient principles uh, for the 21st century leader and it is a must have. If you've enjoyed this time as much as I have, you gotta get a copy. He's signing this, because Laura Lynn, I know she's gonna try to palm this one, but I'm making sure my name is in it anyway. But uh, what, what inspired this? Uh, it was really a, a lifelong uh, experience of uh, using Nehemiah yes. as a mentor on leadership. And there were critical moments in my life mm. when Nehemiah and what he was doing greatly influenced. Yeah. So the publisher said, we need to do a book on what you've learned in leadership. And I went, naturally went back to Nehemiah and I found uh, seven basic principles that I had uh, helped shape my understanding. of. There were three major sectors in my life. I was mm -hmm. head of Youth for Christ in Canada for 16 years. Yes. And then president of the Evangelical Fellowship, which was uh, the, the alliance of evangelicals across Canada. And in the last 16, 14 years, a uh, president of Tyndale University College and Seminary yes. in Toronto. And so each of those were, were different kinds of, uh, of, of, of management responsibilities, mm -hmm. but the leadership ideas were, were mutually learned in those three phases of my life. And so this book is, is really the best that I learned in those uh, 45 years of, of leadership. Wow. from Nehemiah. Wow, I will, I will cherish this because uh, I do uh, appreciate all of those posts that you've been and also just the, uh, how God was able to use a, for the most part, a, a no name in, in Nehemiah, uh, a cupbearer to build a wall that had not been built for over 400 years. Yes. And 52 weeks he was able to do something extend, uh, tremendous. You're, you get a different vantage point uh, looking at the, uh, the global picture. We've been talking about the Canadian picture, but uh, what do you see in the trends that are taking, a pla that are taking place around the world right now? Uh, Brian, over the last three years, uh, I've been able to serve the World Evangelical Alliance. Yes. There are three world Christian bodies. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, mm -hmm. who, represents about 1.2 billion. Yes. The World wow. Council of Churches, uh, which is about 500 million, includes the Orthodox, and the World Evangelical Alliance is about 650 million. Mm -hmm. So that's the body in which I serve as global ambassador. Beautiful. So Lily and I have had opportunity of, I know, visiting 45, 50 countries over the last uh, uh, 36 months. In the last 36 months? Yeah. Wow, and what are you exactly doing in those countries? I, I go in and I work with the uh, the, the, the the National Alliance, yes, uh, like in the states, the National Association of Evangelicals. Uh, yes, but I go to all these countries. Just came back from six weeks in Af uh, six weeks in Africa, eight countries. Uh, do pastors' conferences, meet with ambassadors, meet with uh, uh, met with the, uh, the the patriarch of the uh, Ethiopian uh, Orthodox Church in wow. uh, as a, in Addis Ababa, mm -hmm. in Ethiopia. Uh, it varies from place to place. Sometimes you do a peace conference. Uh, other times you will try to do an intervention on a particular issue. Yeah. But my role is there to encourage mm -hmm. and to and to help them in what they're doing and to in, and to help them see broader. But Brian, as as I as I've been working around the world the last uh, 36 months, uh, 
different countries most every month. There are there have been five mega ideas hmm. that I see or mega influencers on the church uh, in the world today. What are those? Well, the first of is that faith is on the rise. Wow. Now, here in North America, if you read the pundits and the professors and your statisticians, statisticians they'll say faith is on the demise. Mm -hmm. But worldwide, faith is on the rise, be mm -hmm. it Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Islam, we know about that, yes. Hinduism, the BJP party just won in India, which, yes. is a, uh, which is an Indian nationalist Hindu party. Yes. So faith generally is on the rise. But faith is on the rise within the Christian community, dynamically in Africa, in, in Latin America, uh, in Asia, in China, uh, which I go there once or twice a year, and some estimates are 140 million Christians in China. Now, what does that look like? Because I, I know it's on the rise, but what are the sort of practical symptoms of that rise that you see? Uh, well, you got churches growing everywhere, all kinds Planting of ministries. Churches, a lot of church planning. And ministries springing up. There's mm -hmm. just a variety of, of activities wow. that, uh, that manifest themselves depending on the culture and the, and the issues at stake. So there's just a lot of stirring that's just taking place. Yes, and I think one of the reasons is that, that in many of your countries like Africa, spirituality is so integral to people's view of life that in their struggle and their need for faith, when Christ comes and begins to speak into their personal need, there's an immediate attraction. Mm. But also there's been something else developed over the last 50, 75 years. Evangelicals generally haven't had a strong intellectual base. Yes. What we have found is that that intellectual base has, has developed, which is helping to strengthen. Uh, I see we've just got a couple of minutes in this yes. segment, so I'm going to quickly move through them if I can. Yes. The second one is that this is the age of the spirit. Mm. The Pentecostal movement broke out 100 years ago, but it was captured by the by infilling of the Holy Spirit being only identified with glossolalia or speaking in tongues. Right. The charismatic movement broke out, and what it did, it unlinked those two, manifestation from infilling. Mm. And churches then, outside of the Pentecostal community, opened its doors and the Spirit rushed in, and the charismatic movement has made this the age of the Spirit. Mm. The third is uh, the indigenization of leadership, which means as missionaries went overseas, eventually those who were part of that nationality took over leadership of the church. So it's indigenous mm -hmm. in that leadership now is rooted in the culture and the language and the race of the people. And that has just absolutely exploded the church worldwide. Wow. The fourth is that evangelicals have come to realize that we are to be engaged in the public square. Mm. We talked about that earlier, being salt and light. Yes. And we've come to realize that the gospel speaks to all of life. Yes. As, the, as the, uh, the, the Dutch prime minister said, there's not one square inch of creation that God doesn't say that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> but the fifth movement has been an enormous recognition among uh, Christians, and I'm, I'm speaking here of evangelical Protestants primarily, an enormous concern for the issue of justice. Mm. Uh, not just justice and people being treated justly, but systemic issues that create injustice. Mm. So our community that, that backed away from this before has now engaged in the issue of justice and is beginning to, to, uh, to identify and to characterize the movement of Christ worldwide. So those are, those are five mega trends that I see. Powerful. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more and I'm going to bring Laura Lynn into this as well because pull up a seat. You won't want to miss a bit of it. We'll be right back. Well, what an incredible discussion we've been hearing today about what God is doing across the globe and how he is uh, moving in different parts of the world in incredible ways. And in fact, coming up, we'll be hearing more about that. You know, I personally had the privilege of growing up in Uganda, East Africa, and having missionary parents who pioneered a great work there. In fact, you know, there's over 1,500, 1,500, 1,600 churches in Uganda that, uh, that now are thriving because of the work that my parents and some of the other missionaries did, but God is a great God and he is just building leaders inside each country in the world. And it's incredible some of the, the facts and statistics that's coming out. I do know one thing, 
that the Word of God says that the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. And that for each one of us means that whatever God has called you to, uh, many of us know that we don't want to be called to, you know, the depths of Africa. We're afraid of there. We, we don't want to go anywhere. Maybe we just want to be at home. But wherever you are, God has called you to be a strong light, to be salt and light on this earth, what, whatever you're doing. And I remember that um, talking to my missionary parents about God's call on my life to television was, you know, they kind of had a glazed look, to be honest. It was, you know, my mom especially, it was just, you know, really like that's a calling to be on television. But I consider it to be a calling. And I wonder, what is your calling today? God has a specific purpose for your life. Walk in it. Amen. And you might be asking the question, how do I do that exactly? You know, the Bible says in John 12, 24, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. I think a lot of times we try to save our life instead of give our life. And many of you are probably saying, I could never do anything like that. In your own strength, you can't. But in God's, you can. I'd like to get something into your hands, the fullness of God cost you absolutely nothing, one 855 700 But I'd also like to pray with you and believe God today that you have a purpose and God is going to use you. Pray this prayer. Jesus, I'm a believer, but today I die to myself and I ask you to come into my life and make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give us a call at 1-855-759-0700. Of fullness of God. The freedom of choice, the freedom of religion, the freedom of culture, the freedom of how you can dress, talk, say your opinion, everything here is is free in a sense that you can be yourself without worrying about being prosecuted. I'm not talking about people's opinion of you. You can always be uh, impartial to that, but just having the freedom to say what you want to say, that is priceless. And the safety, you hear about Mexico, you hear about Africa, you hear about people being kidnapped in China. You don't have the fear of people coming to your home and hurting your children. That's, that's all priceless here. Welcome back. I have been fascinated by the discussion that you're having about uh, about Christianity around the world. And I am I am a missionary kid, and so I grew up in Uganda. So I have some knowledge of that. I also was in Taktoyaktuk. Uh, but you mentioned five key trends that are going on. I wonder if we could. Um, if we could delve into that just a little bit heavier so that we understand how that is impacting the world, each of those. The, the first is that faith is on the rise. And this is, uh, this counters a lot of what we hear in North America and in Western, in, in Western Europe, right. which is that faith is uh, dropping. It's, because I've heard that there's less church attendance going on in Canada. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, how do we, but how do we look at that? Right. Does it mean that people are believing less? No, one factor is, yes, some people are, uh, a percentage of people are not attending church as frequently as they used to, mm -hmm. but people are a lot more mobile. So the, the, the question is, I think, is not uh, how often do you attend church? Do you attend church weekly, which was the standard that we used to ask, mm -hmm. but does, does your faith, continue to have the importance that it used to have mm. because we have television and so forth. We have other means of accessing our, our faith community, uh, local Bible studies, those kind of things become often a replacement for the Sunday worship because people are working on Sunday, they're traveling. So there is the, the, the old pattern that we had weekly, which would be the way that we would define whether, whether we were going to church more or less, that that is gone. So statistically, they've got to find better ways, and I think they are. And uh, a recent, uh, but interesting, a recent study by a by Ipso Reid, uh, the uh, the vice president said, "You go onto a subway or or any place anywhere in Canada, and you will find that." 
two-thirds of the people that you look at will believe the essentials that you do, that Jesus Christ is the only way to Christ, the only way to God. And the Bible is true. He said, you will find that everywhere you go. That statistically, we can verify that. Now, you don't see that being, uh, or, or hear that being said much. So, the, I think the fact is that Canada and the North America has had a, uh, um, a continuous movement of Christian faith, mm -hmm. but manifest in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's not where we'd like it to be. Yeah. I find a lot of our people are, are consumed with themselves, so self-interest begins to take over uh, the, the, the requirements of, of a disciple of Christ. And globally, uh, this is the same as well. They have media, they have television, they have radio, and so that is also affecting um, globally how Christianity is progressing. Yes, it is. But, but one of the things I, I asked is, uh, when I was in Haiti, uh, some churches are just exploding there. And I said, why is, why is the church growing so fast here? He said, urbanization. And I said, what does that have to do with it? He said, well, think of a kid coming in from a, from a village, working in the city, they're lonely. They have needs, they have no access, they're poor, they have no access to government or to, or to legal issues if, they, if, they are, if they're in trouble. He said the church becomes a new family. And so the, the church now finds its needs not only in preaching the gospel, but in, in offering the multi-services to the people uh, uh, out of their need. So you, worldwide, faith is on the rise. And it's just, it's amazing to see. And that's all faith that you're talking about. Because all faiths. That all means, faiths. yes. So it's not necessarily just Christianity. No, no. Mm -hmm. But there's a recognition in the, the supernatural. Mm -hmm. There's a recognition that, it, that, that life is lived more than just in the cognitive, but it's also lived in the heart. Mm -hmm. And in many places, there is a, there, where Christianity is on the rise, the dealing with the issue of the demonic, those matters are, are critical to the employment of Christianity in, in driving back those forces and freeing people. So we found this in Nepal, that the, that the freeing from darkness uh, was a powerful instrument in the, in the growth of, of, of Christianity. So that's the first one. The second one, uh, the age of the spirit. Uh, it, uh, I was raised in a Pentecostal minister's home and grateful for my uh, experience and the learning. But I have seen how the spirit broke open into many other sectors, the Catholic, the mainline churches. And so everywhere you go, you feel this impact of the spirit living in people and being the manifestation of Christ in the world. Uh, so part of the power of the witness has been where we recognize that we become temples of the Holy Spirit. We always understood the Father as part of the Trinity in Christianity the last 2,000 years. We understand the Father. We, always had a, we all had a Father. We understand Jesus. He lived physically. He was Jesus of Nazareth. He was on the Sea of Galilee. We understand him as a person. But we have never really understood this Holy Spirit. He's been kind of the spooky one of the Trinity. And it took 100 years ago for the, for the, the Pentecostal movement to break through the consciousness of Christians to help us understand that the Spirit is God. He is a member of the Trinity, and he needs to be worshipped and understood. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, and then the charismatic movement broke open other churches to this understanding of the Spirit, our pneumatology or our study, our theology of the Spirit has deepened yeah. and recognizing the power of the Spirit in our lives, I think has been part of the, the influence which has uh, 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 spread the gospel into so many places. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, the dynamism of the Spirit and people are even now, and I know just looking and they, they write in all the time, uh, just wanna know more about the Holy Spirit want to know more about this, this spirit-filled life and living a radical Christian life yeah. through, the, through the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What's the third one? That, that, you that, was, that was the third one. The, that, that the third one, one is leadership is coming from the communities. It's yeah. indigenous. indigenous. And so you, you go to South Korea, for example. South Korea, it is the second largest missionary sending country in the world just wow. after the U.S. Wow. And uh, South Korea, what is it, 60 million people in the U.S. is 330 million. Yeah. So, but when, when that country uh, was led by its own people, the churches, that's when it began to explode. Wow. And I saw, I saw the same thing right through Africa the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. My goodness. The fourth issue is, is uh, evangelical Christians 
in, involved in public leadership, yeah. whether it's political leadership, whether it's economic, social, it is, it is uh, we recognize. And the youth are really taking this on, aren't they? Well, as far yeah. As just yeah, but, and that comes to my fifth, the fifth trend, which is okay. justice. Okay. And are the young people, when I was at Tyndale University, I found that it was the university students, the younger students, for whom justice was a rallying cry. Mm. And they recognized that this simple thing, that if God says, I love justice, yeah. maybe it's something we should love too. But we avoided it. We backed away from it because the social uh, theological liberals took that on as their mantra in the early part of the 20th century. And with that action, we reacted. But I think we've come back to the place where we recognize that, that they had something to say to us. Yes. And we need now to make justice a part of the message of the gospel as well. Well, the message is really go and be a blessing. That's the blessing of Abraham. I will bless you and you will be a blessing to all the nations. I know as we close out and I know this is the last day, but could you pray even that, that father's blessing and that practical reception to that person that's sitting at home as we leave? Our father... In these final moments, I offer this prayer to my friend who is uh, listening and watching and has been thinking about some of the things we've talked about. I pray a blessing on their lives. By your spirit, stimulate in them an interest in the gospel, a love for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and an openness to what you would say to them and where you might lead them. I pray for the forgiveness of Christ in their life, that they would know the liberty from the guilt and the presence of sin that has uh, corroded them. May they feel that freedom even now. And for those around them that they hate, may they learn to love. For those they've ignored, may they include. For, for those they've despised, may they be affectionate. And may the love that begins to permeate, sir, ma'am, your life now, may it just bubble over into the lives of others that you'd be a, a blessing, an encouragement, an inspiration to others. And I offer this prayer because there's only one name under heaven where we, by which we can be saved, and that's through the Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ of God. It's his name, in his name, that I offer this prayer on behalf of you, my friend. Amen. 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 Dr. Brian Stiller, Bishop and Global Ambassador, <laughs> and just wonderful man hey, of God. Thank you. Nice to see you. Such a privilege. Well, God has blessed you to be a blessing. Don't sit, but serve. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm over at the Royal Canadian War Memorial, and we've been here all week. And, you know, I've been reflecting, even myself, about the past, the present, and also the future of not only Canada, but also the world. You know, when I start thinking about some of the travels that I've done, and just coming back from, from Israel, one of the things that I see, that the Spirit of God is moving. This is truly the age of the Spirit. This is a time where we're seeing the same signs and wonders of the first century church where in Africa we're hearing about even watching the 700 Club on, on a telecast that the dead are rising. I mean, that blows my mind, you know? Just because I haven't seen that with my own eyes, it doesn't mean that God is not doing it. Because this is what the Bible says in Joel, and I love this because he said, this is gonna happen in the last days. He said, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who who has dwelt wondrously, dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame again. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Old men are going to dream dreams. Young men are going to see visions. All my male servants, my maid servants are going to prophesy. I'm declaring today that you're going to prophesy. You're going to speak to that situation because nothing is broken unless something is spoken. They're praying in the Middle East, and people are actually seeing visions of Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you realize that's exactly what the tabernacle was? Coming into the tabernacle, the door in, it was called the way. The place going into the Holy of Holies, it was called the truth. Do you know what was, what, when you went into the actual Holy of Holies it was? 
It was the light, the way, the truth, and the light. They're seeing Jesus in this day, and I believe we're seeing Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I don't know about you. God, let it be. Make it happen today in Canada as well around the world to the glory of God the Father. Keep praying with us. We're going to continue to stay on the wall until we see God's glory in this land. God bless you all. One of the things I love best about this show is how it reminds me that I'm not alone as a Christian in Canada. While you may sometimes feel isolated, just tuning in a program like this can remind you that there are thousands of people just like you learning to love, follow, obey, and enjoy our Lord Jesus. That's one of the key reasons this ministry exists, to encourage you as you walk with Christ and to offer a powerful evangelistic tool for reaching Canada with the timeless message of new life in Jesus. Join us today. Your monthly partnership is truly life-changing. $20 a month will do it, and we have a program called Pledge Express that makes it more than easy. Mm -hmm. Just ask for it by name, Pledge Express. When you join, you can look forward to receiving a monthly teaching from Pat or Gordon Robertson designed to get you fired up about following Jesus and sharing His love with others. Now, if you're partnering with us for the very first time, we would love to send you this amazing DVD, Living Under God's Blessings, where Pat and Gordon Robertson bring you real-world demonstrations of God's blessings for Israel and important principles for living under the covenant of God's great favor. Hmm. So call now, 1-855-759-0700. We really appreciate your partnership. Laurelyn, I really appreciated the uh, time that we spent with Brian yeah. Stiller. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I take away is pluralism is not a bad thing. Everyone having a view, but we've got to hold to Scripture. We're not revisionist. We are standing on that timeless Word of God, but we still have to walk in love as well. Yes, we do. And, um, you know, Jesus said, no, you know, there is no greater command than that we love God and that we love each other other. Yes. And that's not always easy. No. I mean, that's what family fights are all about. But, um, but God has called us to a great place and love does conquer all. It really does. And it's truth in love. And you know, it's the ultimate warrior because against love, there is no defense. Well, that's why we're here. And I appreciate what God is doing in this nation. And it's great to hear that faith is on the move in Canada. We're not being left behind. And you know what I like, Brian? Hmm. I like being able to sit on the, the big couch with yeah. you <laughs> and have big really couch. big discussions. The big, the big couch does have big discussions. <laughs> yeah. Well, until next time on The Big Couch, I'm Brian Warren. <laughs> I'm Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson. God bless. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700 or by email cba at 700club.ca or mail Christian Broadcasting Associates Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4, or visit us at 700club.ca.